Peace, be our family. I'm your host, Jabari Lamb, and this is another edition of the Liberian Presidential Series. Now, I know I have not been doing a lot of these videos, and that's primarily because I've been very busy these last couple of weeks. I do have some, some time off right now, so I'm going to be doing some more Presidential Series videos, as well as catching you up on any information that's been going on in Liberia. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you comment down below. Tell us what you think about the presidential series. What is this really impactful to you? What do you think about the situations that they went through? Let us know what you think about the videos that we're doing. In this video, we're going to be talking about the sixth Liberian president, James Skivering Smith. He was the vice president of EJ Roy, and he will come into office after E.J. Roy is deposed. So who was James Skivering Smith? James Skivering Smith was born in Charleston, South Carolina in 1825 to free blacks Carlos and Catherine Smith. So he was the fourth of seven children. Some of his siblings included Mary, Margaret, Carlos, Catherine, Dorothea, to name a few of them. His family then immigrates to Liberia when he is early in his childhood. However, they succumb to malaria, and as a result, his siblings are put into an orphanage. Because of this, not much is known about his childhood. We don't know his, uh, much about how it was like in the orphanage, the conditions. This is the basic background information that we know about his childhood. However, we know that he was very intelligent because he's gonna get accepted into Berkshire Medical College where he's going to receive a medical degree in 1848. He's going to become the second African-American to receive a medical degree. And this is after a man by the name of David J. Peck. He was the first one to receive a college medical degree in a year ago, a year earlier. And he's gonna go to Nicaragua where he's going to die in Nicaragua. So James Skivering Smith gets a medical degree. He's gonna work in Liberia for 20 years. Now, before all of that, before he went to college and before he got the medical degree, he did work with a white doctor in Liberia, Dr. James Lung Lungenbeal, and he was a white doctor that was under the auspice of the American Colonization Society. So as I said, he, he's working with Dr. James Lungenbeal. He received his medical degree in Bershaw Medical College. Then he's going to get his degree and he's going to practice medicine for 20 years. Then he starts getting into politics. So from 1856 to 1860, he's the Secretary of State. From 1868 to 1869, he's the Senator of Grand Boston County. Of course, in 1869, he's going to be serving as Vice President for E.J. Roy. Then he's going to serve as President. And then from 1874 to 1884, he's going to serve as the Superintendent of Grand Boston County. So let's go to E.J. Roy's presidency. We, we talked about his presidency in the previous video of the Liberian Presidential Series. If you haven't seen that video, please get the video so that you can understand what happened to E.J. Roy and how all of this stuff emerges. So, of course, E.J. Roy and James Kimberly Smith are elected. They are the first two Whigs to be elected. They represent the darker skin, America, Liberian, African-American immigrants against the Republican Party who were lighter skin, usually mixed race, what they would call back in the day mulattoes. Some of them were black, although it was mostly known as the mulatto party or those of mixed heritages or lighter skin very, with a significant amount of white blood. So E.J. Roy gets in office, he's deposed. And from October 26, 1871 
It's November 4th, 1871. The country is going to be ruled by a chief e executive committee. Then, EJ, then James Kilbring Smith is going to assume the office for about two to three months until he serves the remainder of EJ Roy's term. And then Joseph Jenkins Roberts takes office. Now, during his time is critical because, like I said, EJ Roy was deposed and the drama that was happening with the Republicans and True Whigs. Of course, like I said, he was brutally removed. You could say it was basically Liberia's first coup before the Samuel Doe coup in 1980. So when James Gibbing Smith returns to Monroe, because when he was deposed, EJ, um, he was not in Monroe when EJ Roy was deposed. So we can speculate that if he was there, highly likely that he would have also been killed and the Republicans would have assumed back power. But he returns back to Monrovia. They're going to give him the presidency to make it look like the legislative process is secure, it's safe. When in reality, we all know there's a coup and they're trying to get rid of the true Whigs and establish Republican slash mixed race, lighter skin dominance in Liberia. So, he, so James Gibbing Smith is really important that he, the one thing that you need to remember is he basically prevents civil war from happening between the Democrat, between, not between the Democrats, between the True Whigs and the, and the Republicans. When there's a, this is a Republican party of Liberia. You know, we have similar dynamics here in America with Democrats and Republicans. But in this case, he's gonna revert a civil war between the Republicans and the True Whigs and he prevents these factions from breaking the country up. So he's willing to work with the Republicans. He's willing to address the issues of demagoguery and colorism that were running rampant because like I said, the true wigs for the, the, the darker skin and the Republicans with a lighter skin. So that's really what, he, uh, what James Gibbing Smith is known about. Pardon me, James Gibbing Smith is known for. James Gibbing Smith, after this this period, like I said, he goes serves to be the superintendent of Grand Boston County. And then he's going to die in 1892 in Buchanan because that's when the last census had his, had his, had his name on it. He then has a son who's going to serve as vice president of the country from 1930 to 1944. He was a well-known politician. And a lot of books don't talk about James Kibbering Smith because he only served for about two or three months. That, that's it. He didn't really serve a real term. It's similar to, analogy would be similar to the president, William Henry Harrison. He was the ninth president. He was between Martin Van Buren and he was after, he was, he was after Martin Van Buren and he was before James K. Polk. I mean, not James K. Polk, John Tyler. James K. Polk came up to John Tyler. But William Henry Harrison only serves about a month in office. And this is similar to James Kimberly Smith. And as a result, he's oftentimes not remembered as a president. He's often written out of the history book. So some people think George Weah was the 24th, but actually he was the 25th. So this is the basic information about James Kimberly Smith. Hope you liked this video. Make sure you comment down below. Tell me what you think. Is this very, very informative? Do you like how we're pushing back uh, uh, about the history of Liberia and really going in depth and explaining the situation? Let us know what you think. And I'll see you again in the next video.